Hello, everybody. My name is Adiel. I am Foothill School Relations Specialist. Today, we're going to take you on a tour of our campus. Now, you may notice that this is a virtual tour. Unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 situation, we have had to move all of our instruction virtual. But that means that you can still look at the campus just in a virtual setting, and we'll introduce you to some of the great buildings and services that we offer. But you'll see pictures of that instead of going to the real campus. As soon as we open, we will reopen campus tours so you can explore the campus in person. But if you are joining us as a student in our virtual setting, we hope that you familiarize yourself with the virtual aspects of it, as well as the in-person campus. We will show you some slides and give you guys some presentation materials and some information we think is beneficial to new students. We're really excited that we have some student ambassadors with us that are gonna help us along as well. Uh, I'll introduce uh, Chrissy. Chrissy, if you could tell the, the audience uh, who you are and what you do here at Foothill. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name is Christine Stevens. I go by Chrissy. Um, I'm a student ambassador at Foothill College and I work in the outreach department. Um, so as a student ambassador, um, I help with, uh, you know, campus tours and um, right now we're giving a virtual campus tour. Um, my major is communications and I will be transferring to San Jose State this fall. Um, and this is going to be my last quarter at Foothill. Yay, congrats. We're so excited that Chris, you're joining us. We're sad that you're leaving us, but we're excited and we know you're gonna do great things at the university that you transferred to. So we're super excited for you. Thanks. We also have a, another student ambassador who works for us at Medea. Uh, she's a great asset to us and she'll be staying hopefully uh, next school year. So we'll have you on our campus. Uh, Medea, how are you? Hi everyone, my name is Medea. So what's Medea Gomez? I am a psychology major and as well my minor is communications so right now i am currently with the foothill ambassadors so i'm an outreach i'm part of the outreach team i do campus tours like how chrissy was saying as well and i also help with such amazing like events that we do have like the day on the hill which was a virtual event that we did have it was incredible just because i was part of the student panel so I was just talking a little bit about my life and hopefully i'm transferring to csu Stanislaus next spring or UC Irvine. Nice, thank you. Thank you both for the introduction. I'm gonna share my screen and we'll go ahead and get started with the virtual campus tour. I was gonna say, feel free to ask any questions throughout the tour, but that is not an option, unfortunately. We will make sure to leave our information after this video is over if you wish to contact us and ask us any follow-up questions. Uh, we are really excited that you're here with us. Now this is our Foothills campus. This is the first step in the campus so once you enter you'll notice that there is one main loop road There's, there is one main path for students to enter and this is because um, the campus is all centered around the foothills area of los altos hills um, that means that there are there's a lot of nature surrounding our campus but we do have a lot of great opportunities to give tours to to our students and so we are really sad that we're not able to come in person to give you guys these tours in person. Uh, but we will do the next best thing and is to show you the campus and, and the campus life. All of us are involved in campus in one way or another. And we definitely will be encouraging you to get involved as well. We'll be providing you some of these resources that we have on campus. So we're really excited to get started and uh, we'll go ahead and, and, and begin. This is the first building that you will start seeing when you join campus at first. And again, this is when you first drive into the Loop Road. This is the first building that greets you. And this is admissions and records and counseling. The first floor is admissions, where you can go and ask any registration questions, get your parking permits, pay for your classes as well. Uh, here, you can navigate through a lot of advisors uh, who can guide you into which classes to sign up for, which quarter to apply for, um, and a lot of different questions. And that's on the first floor. Also on the first floor is the financial aid department. And on the third floor is where you can find counseling. Uh, but the financial aid program is very important because it gives aid to many, many students on our campus. And this is the financial aid department here. Mireya, have you accessed these resources before? I have actually. So with financial aid, it's been really amazing for me just because of my situation with my home. My family, we are 10, we are 10 children in the house. So basically it's kind of hard to afford like with schooling, but financial aid is like a huge part of like my college just because it does pay for like my schooling. It helps me pay for it, but also the Foothill College Promise, what we do have, it's basically two years free for students, first time students. 
the eligibility is you have to be a first time student, even like basically your first year after like high school, even in high school, you could still take a like a college course that doesn't really count as your first time, just basically your first year. And as well, you do have to be a full time student, meaning 12 units at most. And for me, I'm taking 12 units right now. And it's really important for me just because like my situation at home, it's kind of hard to like be putting like we have to pay for a lot of bills. So with the financial aid and like Foothill Promise, it's really important for me just because all I have to pay out of my own pocket is $55, which is really incredible because if I didn't have financial aid or Foothill Promise Grant, I'd probably not be here right now. That's so true, Mireya. The classes here are pretty cheap and community college is way more affordable than the universities, whether they be private or public. And But you still, at the end of the day, are paying $31 per unit for the classes at Foothill. Each academic course is about four to five units. So like Mireya mentioned, you would be taking 12 units to be a full-time student. You can take more as well, but 12 units is the minimum to be a full-time student. And that translates to roughly three to four academic courses, usually about three. So the academic ones are between four and five units. And so that can add up. Each unit is $31, like I mentioned. So you could be paying three to $400 per quarter. With financial aid, and again, the Promise program that Mireya was referring to is completely free. They may even help you pay for your textbooks. They might even give you extra assistance in getting money for a laptop. So it could be the difference between you paying a few hundred dollars every quarter to you paying no money and in fact maybe even getting additional scholarships and grants. There's a grant called the Pell Grant where you can be eligible to receive up to $6,000 every single year and this is for you to use for your academic expenses but that could be anything buying yourself a new car, buying yourself movie tickets to de-stress from your finals. You know a lot of these things could be educational expenses that you can use so make sure you apply to financial aid. My first year I didn't know about it. When I was a Foothill student I did not understand that that these are some of the options that you could access. So please make sure to, to access financial aid. We also have a transfer center. And uh, we have, luckily Chrissy is, has transferred. Chrissy, have you used the transfer center? What are some of the things that you can access here? Yeah, so the transfer center is actually my favorite um, place to go on campus. Um, Cleve Freeman, he is an excellent counselor in the transfer center. Um, I would say that uh, the transfer center is like my favorite um, place to go like as far as resources um, because you can get information on all sorts of uh, colleges and universities that you want to transfer to. Um, they have pamphlets, um, they have transfer uh, events so you can go on the Foothill website and under transfer center you'll find when there's like a college fair um, I went to one uh, fall quarter, it was in the um, small gymnasium, um, which is near the pool, and it was really helpful for me to get to talk to college reps um, from different universities that I was thinking of applying to. So I would definitely check out the transfer center um, if you're thinking about transferring. And I would make sure that you do it um, your first year um, because it's a lot easier um, to start the process earlier. Definitely meet with a counselor as soon as you can, even the summer before, like Christy said, before you even start taking classes at Foothill. But even then, check in every quarter. It could be the difference between you realizing that you had to take extra classes and you didn't take those classes that you needed to transfer. But Foothill has one of the highest transfer rates in the state of California. We have uh, almost 1,400 students every year who transfer to a combination of the University of California, the UCs, California State University System, the CSUs, as well as private colleges. And usually the breakdown is about a third of students go to each of those organizations. Um, there are a lot of students who transfer to out-of-state schools as well. Uh, we have uh, one of my friends who is in student government just got into BYU and he's, he'll be attending BYU. And, but there's a wide range of universities that students transfer to. In order to make sure you're eligible, please check in early and often with the transfer center and with counselors in general. Yeah, and I would recommend, um, you know, like Adiel said, setting up a general education plan as early as possible. Um, that'll map out all the classes you need to take at community college in order to um, be able to transfer those units to uh, a CSU or a UC or a private, even if you want to go to a private. And there is a guaranteed admission 
with the transfer center. So you can get guaranteed admission to the University of California system. Some, so six of the UC campuses, like UC Santa Barbara, UC Santa Cruz, UC Davis, UC Irvine, some of those schools, they, you can get a, a completely guaranteed admission. So that's regardless of, again, what your income might be, that's regardless of um, where you come from. You can get this guarantee. So don't think that maybe college is so far away. All you have to do is sign a contract with that school through the counselor. So again, talk to a counselor to find out more about you can get a guaranteed admission to a lot of universities. You can also this, do, go ahead. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, I was going to say, Adiel, um, you can also get an associate degree for transfer. So if you want to um, get an associate degree for transfer in, let's say, communication studies, I would meet with your counselor and go to assist.org and make sure that you're meeting those requirements. You definitely check out assist.org. That's the system that your counselor will be using as well to try to map out which classes you can be taking. Uh, but definitely meet with the counselor because they can uh, give you all the resources available. This is, here is the Smithwick Theater, and this is where we have our new student orientation, our open house events, such as Day on the Hill, as well as presentations during the school year, such as the physics show that we have. We bring over a thousand students to our campus for each show, and they get a, a great introduction onto what it's like to be a physics presenter and, and a science innovator. This is an opportunity for students to get involved because you can get paid to work at the physics show, whether it be you as a presenter, whether it be as a campus tour guide. There are no volunteers for this. This is all based on uh, employment. So if you want a job on campus and you like the STEM field, uh, this is definitely an opportunity for you to get involved in the physics shows, which take place in the Smithwick Theater. So definitely check it out. If you're interested in acting, you can also take a class here where you can actually, you know, pretend like you're in a big salon, in a big area where you're gonna be performing. And we do have the performances here every so often. So check out the Smithwood Theater and check out our, our series of performances when we're back under regular schedules. My first major when I started at Foothill, so I might not have mentioned it, but I was a student at Foothill College. Uh, I was able to transfer to UCLA and now I'm back here studying at Foothill. But my first major was music technology. I'm not sure. I think I wanted to be a rapper or something or a music producer. I don't know what it was. But the, the thing is, at Foothill, you can find a lot of flexibility in your courses. So you do not have to stick to just one major. Um, and a lot of students out of high school do not know what you're going to study and you don't know what your life is going to be about. Even once you graduate from university, a lot of my classmates at UCLA at graduation were like, all right, now what? You guys planned it out? Oh, okay. No. So that's fine. So, but a lot of times it does give you the flexibility to go to community college first and take these courses and see what your interests are. My first interest here was music technology. Eventually I switched to psychology and communications, uh, but I just continued to, to have music technology as my passion. We still have a recording studio on our campus and this is one of our professors, Eric, uh, who does a lot of the work with the sound engineering. We have a recording studio on our campus where you can go and practice your vocal, uh, you can actually record your own voice. You can record your band, your music, if you have it, or you can learn the back end work. So you can be one of the students who helps the musicians, who helps the performers. And you can get a certification in different music technology software, such as Pro Tools. So it goes a long way. They also have a computer lab where you can access MIDI keyboards that you can make music with. This is also a place where you can do graphic design. Now you'll notice at the very bottom of the picture, there is a PlayStation controller. That PlayStation controller is because uh, they also teach sound engineering for video games. And so if you're interested in video game design, interested in working with that technology, definitely consider this. I'm pretty sure they play FIFA and Madden and all those video games when they have their downtime too. So this is one of the more fun majors that you can find on campus. But feel free to take a class just in general if you're interested in the topic. You do not necessarily have to be majoring in this to take a class. And this is our pool area. So we are going around the campus. So this is, we are following the loop road as if we were driving around the campus. Uh, so this here is the pool area in the athletics department. Uh, Chrissy, you spent some time here in the pool area, right? What can you tell us about this area? Yeah, so we actually had um, dance practice right next to the pool. I don't know if I mentioned, but um, I'm a member of the Foothill dance team. I'm actually wearing the shirt right now. Um, we had practice right next to the pool. And um, I can tell you that, uh, both the women's uh, water polo team and the swim teams uh, practice there. And you can also sign up to take a class and it'll fulfill your um, PE requirement. 
And there's a lot of classes you can take um, at Foothill and they're great classes. I would definitely recommend taking a swimming class. I took a swimming class when I was a student and I also took the archery class, which is taught in the, in the theater right next to the pool as well, similar to where you have your practices for the dance team, Chrissy. You can imagine as soon as the movie, The Hunger Games came out, what do you think is the most popular class that we had on campus? It was archery. But a lot of students were disappointed that you couldn't shoot at live targets or fruits and things like that. You had to shoot at an actual bullseye. But it was really cool because you got to actually practice with a bow, learn how to shoot. And I was getting university credit at the same time. So similar to the GE requirements that a lot of high school students have, Foothill has similar requirements that we call, uh, that could be like the, the A through G requirements similar. Uh, but what that means is you can take certain English, math, and even PE classes to satisfy those requirements. So. So don't just think that you have to take the hard classes, the stressful ones. And even if you are taking, you know, if you're majoring in engineering or something difficult, feel free to take a pool class. Feel free to take archery or basketball or volleyball or one of the athletics courses. I definitely encourage you to get involved. Um, Mideya, can you notice the mountains in the background though? There are a lot of hills, so we're not called Foothill for nothing. Uh, what's been your experience like uh, dealing with the hills and, and at Foothill? Is it, is it a lot or is it not too bad? Um, it's not really too bad. Just we do have like um, some steps that we have to take. But I mean, it's pretty nice. Like being around nature is like one of the best things that I've like really loved about Foothill and still love about it is because like it's all about like nature. Like it's beautiful to be over there. You see a lot of mountains. You see a lot of trees and like it's worth it. I mean, the st all the steps you have to take, it's all worth it at the end of the day. A lot of students get the freshman 15 is what it's called when you go to a university or a college for the first time you leave home or you're just dealing with more hard work and more stressful situations so students that freshman 15 is when you gain 15 pounds from eating unhealthy um, or just doing uh, unhealthy habits at foothill you don't really have that freshman 15 because you do have to climb up a few a few sets of stairs to get to campus and we offer a lot of great programs for you to participate so if you don't want that freshman 15 when you enter Foothill for the first time, uh, make sure to take one of our athletics or the workout classes or just walk around campus. And you see the hills in the background, there are a lot of hiking trails in the area. So if you want to do a loop road uh, hiking trail, we can let you know what some of those trails are. Just feel free to message us and we'll, we'll reach out. But otherwise, definitely check out the pool area, Olympic sized pool. Join the team. One of my friends joined the team and he had no swimming experience and he turned out to be one of the best athletes on the team and traveled and got to swim competitively so don't think that you just because you now participated in one of the athletic programs before that you can't join at foothill definitely check them out this is our football field we do have a football team and uh, chrissy i hear the football team is pretty good uh, what is your involvement with uh, with uh, helping the football team go undefeated last year yeah, so I like to think we had some part in that. Um, we were at all the home games. Uh, we didn't go to any away games, but we were at every home game. And we cheered on um, all the football players. Uh, we also performed during halftime. And we had sideline routines as well. Yeah, so the, the football team was undefeated last year. You made it to the bowl game. And again, we have a lot of recruits from the local area, but also uh, from internationally and from different states. So feel free to apply. I mean, you can, in the fall term, they should be uh, having some practices. Uh, so if you want to join and participate, again, there is no experience necessary. There are tryouts, but, but you can join the team. And you can join one of the cool activities, uh, like Chrissy was mentioning, which is the dance team. And so what other events do you cheer for? And is this a cool, uh, a cool thing to get involved in, you think? Yeah, so the dance team was actually my first initial um, contact with Foothill College like I wasn't even taking classes at the time when I tried out um, and we had tryouts back in May of last year I'm not sure what um, the deal is going to be this year with tryouts but if you have any questions or concerns about tryouts I would definitely contact coach Jamie um, and uh, yeah I would try out if you have any experience in dance or if you don't have any experience in dance you don't necessarily have to be a dancer to join the team. I know some of the girls um, on this year's team or this last year's team um, had no dance experience and we all are like one big family. So it's really fun 
and we get to perform at um, new student orientation. We also um, have our own booth for club day, um, which Adiel uh, will be talking about later in the presentation. Um, we also get to help out with uh, things in the community. So we helped out with like a diabetes fundraiser last summer. And we also helped out with a summer camp um, that had to do with uh, football. Um, so it's, it's really great and you get a lot of awesome experiences. And uh, we have to remember that when we get involved in campus life, a lot of these organizations realize that you are a student first. Um, are, do you schedule the practices around your class schedule or, or how does that work? Yeah, so we practice every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 to 10.30 at night, not in the morning. Um, everyone assumes it's in the morning. Um, I don't wake up that early. Uh, but yeah, so we definitely try to make sure that um, academics come first. Um, in fact, Coach Jamie makes sure that we all, you know, have good grades. And um, in order to be a member on the team, you know, we have to be keeping up with our schoolwork. So, um, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't worry, like, about if you want to join, let's say, softball or basketball. I wouldn't worry about it interfering with, um, with your classes. Great. And so here we are, uh, we're just ending the athletic section. So we start here in admissions and records. When we first drive into the main part of the campus, we went around through the Smithwick, through the athletics area, the pool. And now we're going to start coming to the campus center. So we're back on the main part of campus and we're going to join the campus center. But one of the things to remember too, uh, is that the campus is all counterclockwise. So like I said, there is one main loop road. So make sure that you remember whenever your class is located. So if you have a class, say, in the 3000 building, uh, parking lot three is usually the closest to you. If you have a class in the 2000 buildings, parking lot two is usually the closest to you. So that's a good way for you to get acquainted with the way the campus is located. Okay. Now we're in the main part of campus this is the bookstore and the campus center. And so uh, what's been your experience like um, for either of you with your textbooks? Um, are they expensive? Are they cheap? And have you purchased them at the bookstore? Um, so yeah, for me, I purchased all my textbooks at the bookstore. Um, I don't know if, uh, Maria, you want to talk about uh, what your experience has been like with purchasing textbooks. You can also um, go to the library and loan textbooks if uh, that, that's an option too. So. Um, so for me, I'm always in the bookstore. I mean, I'm not really like, I don't, I buy my books there. Like, you know, I get it for free. I get my books for free just because I'm part of the EOPS, which is Extended Opportunity Program Services. So I do get my books for free. They do pay for it all. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be talking about it a little bit more as we go over there. Um, I personally get them all for free. So I just basically get my books, but I also buy some pens, pencils, whatever I need for this class, the classes I need. So basically, I don't know, I just spend my time over there. It's really nice, it's like fun. I, my friends and I always go in there. I mean, we kind of waste our money, but like it's really incredible because they have so much stuff in there and it's like a fun opportunity for you to just check it out as well. Like that's where you go for your books or you can do it online as well if you needed to. Yeah, and currently uh, we are having a completely online uh, textbook. So uh, you buy a book through the bookstore, we, you, we can arrange for them to be delivered to you. And then at the end of the quarter, usually there is a textbook buyback. So you can resell your textbooks back and they can give those to another student as a used version and they'll resell that and they'll give you some money back. So if you wanna resell those, uh, feel free to do so. Right. Chrissy, what is your favorite part about campus? Do you think, what, do you have a favorite building or a favorite area? Yeah, so I would say for me, it's either the cafeteria or the library. Um, it depends on um, what mood I'm in that day. If I'm in more of a mood to study, I'll usually go to the library. Although you can study in the cafeteria, it's right there. Um, usually it's pretty quiet, so you can study there. Um, I would not study during college hour because usually there's a lot of um, events going on. College hour is every Wednesday from 12 to 1 and it's usually in the cafeteria although sometimes there's events in the library quad um, and usually it's um, has something to do with uh, heritage month. So for example I think this month is um, Latino heritage month and 
uh, April was like Asian Pacific Islander, um, but usually there'll be speakers and there'll be um, raffles and prizes and ways you can get involved. So it's really fun. And this is also where our cafeteria is located, where we have our food vendors and that is uh, both KJ's Cafe where you can get coffee uh, during the regular uh, school year. And you can also get food from our vendor Pacific Dining, so you can buy food as well. They also cater for different events. So if you join a club or an organization, our campus food services can cater that event uh, and, and definitely have, uh, have connections with that as well. So it is not yeah, too well if you have an event. Another thing I forgot to mention is that during college hour, when these events do happen, you get a lot of free food. So definitely don't miss out on that. A lot of free food and free clothes. I'm currently wearing a Foothill College Honors shirt and I've never been in the Honors program. So uh, there's free clothes, there's free food, and you get to meet a lot of friends for getting involved. So we definitely cannot stress it enough. You should definitely try to get involved on campus. If it is at all possible, be part of the Foothill community, even if that is on a virtual setting when you first start in the fall. Uh, this is one of the ways that you can get involved. Again, this is still in the same campus center building. This is student government's offices. Uh, student government operates with a budget of over half a million dollars. So they're able to work with students and clubs and different organizations to provide some support for students and those programs. A lot of what they do is host the events that, that Chrissy was just talking about, whether that be uh, some of the Heritage Month series. So every month has a different heritage theme. Also, there's events around mental health. There's events around just general student activities. So like the pep rally that she mentioned, like club days, like some of the different informa information sessions that we offer, um, as well as just fun activities. Every so often we'll go off to Great America. Uh, we'll get movie tickets that you can get for like $5. Uh, we'll have uh, raffles, we'll have giveaways, and we'll just have some, some fun sessions. You know, we in the past have had Ultimate Frisbee nights. We've had staff versus students uh, games, whether that be basketball, competitions, volleyball competitions, uh, basketball, softball, all of these sports, uh, you, we can't compete the students versus the staff. And so now that I'm on the staff side, it's exciting to beat some students. But um, I remember one of my, my only goals, I didn't even want to graduate. I just wanted to beat the dean um, at, at basketball. So now uh, that can be your, your role as well. But definitely join student government and definitely consider joining the student clubs. Uh, that is one of the best ways to get involved, meet a lot of people. And most of these people are going to end up being in your same classes. So I know Chrissy, I can probably tell you, and Maria can probably tell you, a lot of the people that you work with on campus will be also in your classes. And chances are you may also transfer to a university with them. So that's where you can get all the best help. And it is usually a lot easier to talk to some, a student who's involved and a student leader who has the information than to talk to a staff member or a counselor or you know, make an appointment with the president. So it, it can be a little bit easier to work with a student one-on-one. -on -one. So join some of these programs, it definitely goes a long way. Yeah, and Adiel, um, can I talk about Theater Club for a little bit? Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm a member of Theater Club at Foothill College, and if you're interested in drama, acting, anything like that, or even if you just wanna work on your communication skills and being more outgoing, I would definitely recommend joining. Um, we have lots of improv games, movie nights, um, we were even planning a trip to Ashland, Oregon, um, which we would have gone if it weren't for the COVID situation. Um, but I know in years past, um, students have told me they've gone on the Ashland trip and they've loved it and it's really fun. Um, it's for the, the Shakespeare Festival um, and they usually have it every year. Um, so yeah, I would definitely um, see if any of the clubs you're interested in have field trips because um, I know for, was it anthropology? They had a trip to Hawaii. They would have gone to Hawaii this summer, so. Yeah, unfortunately, the one of the cool things about campus is that, not unfortunately, but unfortunately for these times, uh, we do have a lot of study abroad programs that you can participate in. So uh, like you mentioned, anthropology would have gone to Hawaii and done an excavation project over there and uh, worked with one of the professors. Um, but unfortunately, they're not able to do that. Where some of the other programs that are affected is the English department with creative writing. They will go to London for a semester and do a lot of the work over there instead of being on Foothill campus, except that they'd be getting Foothill credit. And the Hawaii students would have gotten Foothill credit as well. One of the other areas uh, is Ecuador, also with the anthropology and the medical brigade. So if you want to go and help uh, at an orphanage, help build wells, 
help the, the students and the people who are there. There's definitely opportunities for you to do mission trips like that that are medical based, but you can also go and study abroad. So if you want to go to Ireland, um, to other countries like that, uh, there's definitely a lot of opportunities to do that uh, once we go back to normal. But definitely check out those programs because you can participate in the anthropology lab at Clifton College and get hands-on experience with working with, with the forensics team and working with linguistics and some of those cool programs. So definitely check those out. And you do not have to be an anthropologist to go to Hawaii with the anthropology program. You, know, you don't have to go uh, and be involved with them to go to the hiking trips that they do or to the camping trips. So feel free to join and get involved to whatever comfort level you have. This is an example of some of the classrooms that we offer on our campus. Um, Mireya, what is the more typical classroom you think? Is, what is the, the, does the typical classroom look like the one above? Um, it does actually. Um, usually the classes I've taken on campus, they're really small, which is a great thing for me just because like I don't really um, tend to do well with like large classes. Like sometimes like the, ter the stereotypical like universities are like big and community colleges supposedly they're like huge classrooms, 100 students, but that's not the case at Foothill College. We have like, it's so small. It just feels like you're in high school again. Like for me, in my opinion, like it's like 30 students at most. In my head, it's like 30 students or anything. Um, so I think it's a really important, like for me, like growing up, like I've always had small classes. So like being able to be in a small classroom and like having the professor actually know you by your name is such an incredible thing that Foothill College allows you to have like as an experience as well. Yeah, that is a great point. Media. We have a lot of the, the classes. The average class size is 28 students at Foothill. So the picture above is the, the more common example of what you can expect to be in a classroom. Uh, there are some exceptions though. There are some classes um, like anthropology, or sorry, like astronomy that you might take in a lecture hall, uh, which is a bigger room like the one at the bottom. And there's about three or four of these buildings that you can take a, a big lecture hall class. Some of those are like biology, the introduction to biology, where you might be in a class with 100 students, but these big classes all have a lab component. So maybe you, ha you are in a class with 150 students if you're taking that, that ast astronomy class, but then you also have a lab component where you go and work hands-on with a group of about 25 to 30 students. And that's with a professor more hands-on. And like you said, Mireya, the professors here usually go by their first name. So it's not like in high school where a lot of times you're Mr. Uh, or professor, uh, here you go by your first name uh, the majority of the times. So you get to interact a little bit more personally with, with the students and the staff. But we definitely encourage you to go to office hours. because Studies do show that the more office hours you attend and the more the professor knows your name, like Mireya said, the higher the grades that you get. And that's not because the professor fakes, gives you a good grade. That's because you actually understand the material when you're going to the office hours and you're paying attention. So definitely encourage you to get involved, especially if you're in one of those classrooms where it may be a little bigger. Like I said, there aren't many, but there are a handful of them where you kind of get an idea of what it's like at the university level. Some universities, when I went to UCLA, I was in a class at one point with 300 students. And that was almost impossible to go at the end of class to talk to the professor. So they had TAs that you could talk to individually. And so, but you do have to make the extra effort because if you do have a question, it may be hard to answer questions in the lecture hall of 300 people. So definitely meet with the professor one-on-one. -on -one. It goes a long way and the professors love seeing that you're interested in getting involved a little bit more. Uh, what is the, the, so both of you, what is the favorite class that you've taken at Foothill? Do you have a favorite class or a favorite professor? Yeah, so for me, um, I took COM4 because I'm a COM major. Um, COM4 is group discussion. And I took it with Karen Pagosian. And uh, I, of course, I looked her up on Rate My Professor first, and she had a bunch of really good reviews. Um, and so after I took her class, I was just like amazed at how many friends I made. Like I still have a group chat with like all the friends I made in that class. And it was just super fun. Um, we had mostly group projects because that's what the class is. It's group discussion. Um, so we got to learn like those interpersonal skills and how to like, you know, do group projects. I know most people don't particularly like group projects, but um, in my opinion, I loved working in groups. Like that was my favorite class for me by far. That was one of my favorite classes too. It's a good choice. Um, for me, I think one of like the, my, my favorite all time class is like the career planning, just because like for me, like coming in, like I didn't even know what I wanted to do 
my first thought was doing dental hygiene, but I ended up not doing that. So I ended up going into psychology and doing my, like my major is psychology and my minor is com um, communication just so I can be a, a victim's advocate coordinator. So like really that community, that class helped me a lot. It like helped me understand like what I needed to do to get there. And as well, like knowing what I wanted to do just because like a lot of students come in like with not knowing what they want to do. So it's something that was a huge part of my life that helped me a lot to know what career was set for me. And is that class taught by a counselor normally? Um, normally, yes. So the counselor that taught it when I was taking it was Fatima Janae. She is wonderful. She is really amazing. She helps me a lot. Um, I still see her sometimes, communicate with her. We email all the time just so she can help me with like helping like understand like what classes should be taking as well. So like I come and see her sometimes when I need help and like when I need questions to be answered. Nice. Yeah. So it is good to develop that relationship with the counselor. So we recommend that you meet early and often, but you can choose different counselors. You know, if, if someone uh, matches your style or your same enthusiasm or you guys have the same interests, maybe you can go to that counselor after exploring different ones and seeing where the best fit is. Um, but it is better to, to go to one specific uh, once you kind of have that familiarity, right? Because then they'll know your situation and they'll be able to advise you a little bit better. So great suggestions. Uh, this is the library. So now we're going to the exact center of campus. Uh, this here is Simon Pennington. He is uh, our tour guide for our day on the hill that happened last year. And he also was one of the instrumental, uh, he's a vice president um, uh, of Foothill College and he works uh, with the administration to try to provide extra support to students. And so here you can see him leading a campus tour. Now during our regular terms, we offer campus tours usually um, either like a Tuesday or Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Uh, so we will be going back to that during the normal schedule. Um, but here you can see the library right behind him, and that is the center of campus. So if you're ever lost, try to go to the center of campus and remember that the buildings are all counterclockwise in numbering. So it is easier to navigate that way. But we hope that you, we can open the campus soon and you can come in and take a tour on campus in case you're not able to get all the information here today. But right here in the library, we have a lot of great resources that you can access. Uh, this up here is the Learning Center. So this is the second floor of the library and you can see the first floor down below. And this was recently remodeled. So we have a lot of new state-of-the-art equipment, and a lot of uh, electronics that students can use. We have uh, millions of volumes and some of those are in our archives digitally. And so you can use a lot of the computers and a lot of the software to access a lot of the projects for class. Some of your programs and some of the teachers will require you to go directly to the library and research periodicals from a certain time period. So they know that students might like to use Wikipedia every so often to research for projects. Um, but part of that learning at Foothill is very hands-on. So we want to make sure that students actually are going to the library, checking out the books, checking out even the digital copies, just to make sure that everybody's on the right track. But you can find a very quiet place to study. And I know, uh, I know, I think, Maria, you, or sorry, Chrissy, you'd mentioned that you like studying here. Yeah. Um whenever I need like a more quiet environment, usually I'll study downstairs, but let's say I'm like having trouble concentrating or I just really need to focus on like an essay or something, I'll go up to the learning center and I'll do some studying there. And this is a quiet area, so there's no talking at all here. So you can hear a pin drop from across the room. Right next to the library is the tutorial center, which is actually right behind the library. Uh, and that is the teaching and learning center. You're able to get help with some of your essays and any of the questions that you have. So these are by volunteers uh, and also staff members that have given their time to work with a lot of the students. And you see that orange sign that says need help. Uh, a lot of these are tutors will be sitting at these tables and on a first come first serve basis, students can come and get help with their essays. So you bring in an essay, they can help you edit it. Uh, so they can also help you with your transfer applications if you're interested in that, your personal statements, letters of recommendation, really any type of writing. But uh, for the most part, they do help with academic um, tutoring. And this is not necessarily uh, related for the STEM area. So this, this tutoring is mainly for English and history, um, you know, things that involve writing. They can help with a lot of the writing programs. 
Uh, here now we're uh, getting to the Veterans Plaza. So here you can see a mural that was actually drawn by Foothill students. And this part of campus is also where the Disability Resource Center is. Uh, the Veterans Center is located, as well as some other programs that help students, um, student resources. And so if you're interested in art, you can participate in our art programs and actually do the artwork around campus. You'll notice a lot of the artwork when you come to our, to our campus. Uh, but these buildings are designated to be a resource for students. If you are a veteran, if you are uh, a member of the Disability Resource Center, or you have any type of learning disability, uh, or really you just need extra help, maybe you need extra time on tests, they can help students with extra time and accommodations. And like I said, it, uh, you are also one of the first students to uh, register for, cl for classes when it comes time to it, if you're a part of some of these programs, if you're a veteran. So if you know someone who's a veteran, and is maybe interested in coming back to college, definitely let them know that Foothill has a great veteran center that supports student veterans. And we do field trips every so often and we do a lot of, have a lot of support events and programs to help the transition from uh, military to civilian life. So definitely if you know anybody in the military or you yourself plan to join the military and then come to Foothill, we'd love to have you. And the veteran center is here to help you with your GI Bill or any type of veteran military related questions. So that was this part of campus here in the 5,000 buildings. So just to recap, we started here in admissions and records when we first drove into campus. We went around the main loop road through the Smithwick Theater, yeah, the stadium, the pool area. We continued on through the campus center, the library, and then we passed here uh, where we are currently. And we uh, did pass the STEM center. So that is right next to the library. And uh, right here is the teaching and learning center. The STEM center provides tutoring for all areas in, in the science and technology fields. So if you need help with your chemistry or your biology, they do have student tutors. And if you want to participate, a lot of times you can also help tutor in some of these areas. You just have to have taken the class before and gotten an A in the class. It's that simple. Just get an A in the class and you're ready to teach it. But they do uh, make sure that you are knowledgeable of the material. But if you want to be a tutor, some students can get paid and you can even get paid for taking notes for somebody else in the class. So definitely come and talk to us if you have more questions about that. Now that we're on the left side of campus, this is the Crow Center uh, and the observatory. So this here is up here in the top level of campus. So this is the upper, upper campus. So students do not necessarily know that we have an observatory with the telescope and they don't know that we have a, the Crow Center for Innovation. But these two are very, very important buildings that we have on our campus. The Crow Center here on the right hand side has the latest technology uh, regarding 3D printers. They can help students to create any type of design projects, whether that be uh, things involving knitting, sewing, acrylics, um, graphic design, sketching. Uh, if you're interested in engraving something on a cup, on a piece of paper, on a piece of a board, uh, really anything, any type of design thing, they have 3D printers, they have machines that can help you with your design projects. And so if you want to design or, or you have like a childhood toy that you value and you don't want to lose it, you want to make a replica of it, you can use a software to create an exact replica of whatever toy you want or whatever object you want. A lot of the uh, local communities use the 3D printers and they use our, our STEM programs to actually develop uh, medical equipment for themselves. And so a lot of prototypes are built here. So if you're interested in technology, innovation, graphic design, this is definitely the place for you because you can work with your hands and do some projects that can actually affect a lot of lives. And so we have the resources available for you if you want to get involved in that. On the left hand side, we do have the, the observatory. Uh, where we have stargazing parties, uh, Friday nights and Saturday mornings. Friday nights usually around 9 p.m. and Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. If the sky is clear, um, when there's no uh, coronavirus uh, epidemic going on, they will have those stargazing parties. And so people from the community come by, people from all walks of life, and as well as students come because a lot of times you get extra credit in your astronomy classes for actually attending the observatory and looking through the telescope. So not only do you get to learn from a textbook, you actually get to apply these things hands-on. So definitely check out the observatory. This up here is the PSEC building. Uh, Chrissy, have you taken a class here? What can students find up in this area? Yeah, so I took statistics back in the fall quarter. Um, I think that it's a great resource for students. Um, I didn't spend too much time there, but I really enjoyed um, the class I took and my professor. Um, and I also made a lot of friends in that class too. Yeah, well, the students like taking classes here, even though 
Uh, PSEC stands for Physical Sciences and Engineering Complex. So the complex, I think, maybe refers to the building, but I think complex also refers to the difficulty of the subject matter. Um, there are some difficult topics that are taught here, and they have a lot of great support system. Uh, but also, it's one of our newer parts of campus. This was just remodeled and completely done a few years back. And so each classroom has millions of dollars of equipment. Uh, don't steal it, but they do have millions of dollars of equipment that you can access for the lab portion. So like I said, we have lectures which are maybe might be bigger lectures with about 80 100 students and then you also have the hands-on lab portion where you do the experiments that you talked about from the class and those generally happen up here in the PSEC building which is where most of the um, science and the technology courses take place um, they do have a lot of experiments that you can do so if you like working with science uh, there's a plethora of classes that you can enroll in and this is also a quiet place for you to study and also there's a coffee shop up above on the hill um, we're actually looking at the KJ's Cafe right here, where you can go get yourself coffee and you don't have to go uh, all the way to the middle of campus. And this is uh, above, it is up a few hills, so you can see uh, the bit of the stairs here and you do have to cross the main loop road uh, to get to this part of campus. But uh, the campus is not as big as some people think. Uh, really, the entire campus can be crossed. So this is the one end of the campus and the pool area is the other end. You can get there in less than 10 minutes. So it, is, it does not take too long to get from one side to the other. Yeah, um, that's one of the things that I love about Foothill is that it's like such an accessible campus and you can get places easily. And it didn't take me that long to find my classes. Like my first week, I remember, like I was so anxious at first, like, oh no, I'm not gonna be able to find anything. And then I found all my classes and right away, so. Yeah, it is. Uh, it may be a little stressful when you first get here, but if you've come to virtual tours or gotten a campus tour, or at least explored and gotten a rough idea of where the classes are, it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, right behind the PSEC area is the soccer field. Uh, we do have this soccer stadium where our soccer team practices as well as uh, some of the archery courses take place uh, on the field as well. And one of the cool areas, and you may not be able to notice unless you squint really hard, uh, but President Obama actually landed on our campus a few years back he visited Foothill and the surrounding community. Um, he had a fundraiser. And so the cool thing was that we got to see Obama. Uh, we waved at him. I don't know if he waved back, but in my heart, I know he waved back. But we got to see Obama, his motorcade, uh, but the field was completely destroyed. And my soccer, my soccer field, my, my cousin was on the soccer team at the time. And he, let me, he told me that, yeah, there was like seven or eight crop circles as if aliens had come down because all of his helicopters destroyed the field completely. So, but I'm not on the soccer team, so woohoo, Obama. But unfortunately, they, the soccer team had to practice on the football field with the football team for a few months, I think for like six months while we remodeled the field. So just imagine the soccer team showing up for the first day of practice, and then all the football players are like, what are you guys doing here? Uh, can we play with you guys? <laughs> so I can just imagine how that conversation went. But luckily, we have remodeled the field. If you guys are interested in seeing where Obama landed, uh, let us know and we can take you to that spot specifically. But uh, otherwise, next time that maybe President Trump comes by or the next president, we'll, uh, we'll let you guys know so you can be a part of that as well. But you can imagine the campus shut down completely. And uh, it was in the whole afternoon that students were stuck on campus who weren't aware that there was a uh, President Obama who was visiting. But if you're interested in sports, definitely consider the soccer field. There is a softball stadium right behind it as well. And so we are getting to the end of our tour. We have gone all the way around campus. Like I said, see, it's not that big. So you guys are already experts. Uh, this is the library quad. So this is the, the center of campus. And like Chrissy already talked about earlier, uh, this is where a lot of our events happen. Um, what are some of the events? And, and can you guys talk a little bit more about Club Day and what you can expect uh, from getting involved on campus? Chrissy and then Mireille. Yeah, so um, Club Day is really amazing. Um, every club that Foothill offers, uh, has a booth that you can go check out and talk to people that are in that club, find out about things like field trips, and um, there's no like prerequisite like to joining, like you said, you don't have to be an anthropologist to join the anthropology club. Um, we're almost all the clubs are, well, pretty much all the clubs are accepting of whoever wants to join. And I think that's one of the really cool things that I love about Foothill is that when I came to Foothill, everyone was, everyone was just so like welcoming and, and accepting. And I think that's awesome. 
Um, and yeah, so the dance team has, we have our own booth that you can come check out. And if you have any questions about joining the dance team, um, you can ask us and we'll try to answer them. Like Chrissy said, like, I, that's what one thing I really liked about Foothill is that like, literally like on club day, a lot of students go and just check them out. And it's like, they always tell you like, feel free to sign up. Like this school is like really comfortable. Like it's really a free, like a friendly zone place for you to go. And like um, all the meetings and like everything with the clubs, it's so important. And like, as for myself, like I'm part of the Bible study group. So basically we do a lot of like, just basically like Bible studies, but I think that was one of the key points for me was to join a club. Like it didn't really matter what type of, like what type of club it was. It was just something I really needed to do just to put myself out there. And it's like the library quad is not only for that, but like there's a lot of students who just study outside and it's like an amazing view where you can study. And it's just, there's a lot of benches where you can study like literally people are so friendly there that they let you sit down at the bench, the same bench that they're sitting at. And if you need somewhere to sit, they'll always be like, hey, you can sit here if you want to study too. So I think it's really incredible um, here at Foothill College that we do have a library quad. Yeah, and the dance team, we also had a pep rally there. Um, and for new student orientation, we usually perform a dance or a few dances. And I remember um, that was like one of my favorite memories from last year and just being at Foothill. Yeah, and every so often, so the, the club day usually happens at the beginning of the quarter, usually the first couple weeks, and then you're able to go to club day, but they also have outside vendors who come and, and try to promote things. So they have a, a poster sale every so often, they have jewelry sales. And so if you guys wanna purchase some things from, from local vendors uh, who are in the area, and we do wanna show our support every so often. Uh, but if you have an event too that you wanna create, uh, this campus is yours. This is the kind of, this is the truth. Uh, the Foothill staff is here to support the student needs and the student desires. If you want to create a club, if you want to start an, an initiative, if you want to start something, a, a sports team, you can come and, and do that at Foothill College. We are very willing. We have a lot of staff who is available to not just be your advisor for a club, but also to help you if you want to develop something in your career, if you want to develop a hobby, or if you're interested in doing any other types of initiatives. We've had technology apps uh, from Silicon Valley come by and, and try to set up on our campus. We've had different apps get launched on our campus and, and used us as test subjects. That sounded weird. But you are able to, to participate and innovate in whatever way that you're interested in participating. So this campus is yours. Do not think that you're just a visitor on our campus. As soon as you register and you apply to the college, or as soon as you start thinking that you belong here, we welcome you with open arms and we're so excited that you guys are interested in joining us on our campus. We do have some great clubs and like, like they said, you do not have to be a, a specific culture or a specific major to join these clubs. This for example is the Puente Club. Puente means bridge in Spanish. They work with the community and this is a cohort. So for a year, you're taking the same classes with the same students. You guys get to work together. You guys go on field trips. You interact with people that are similar to you. Uh, historically, this program is for Latino and Latina students, uh, but we have students from all over the world who take classes and who participate with these programs. We have scholarships that we give out that are, you know, regardless of what your background is. So please feel free to join some of these programs, some of these clubs, some of these organizations. Come and check it out. This campus, uh, we feel the college experience is a lot better when students get involved. And so we realize that life might get in the way and there may be some personal things that are happening, but we strongly encourage you to get involved, ask questions, and be productive in your classes, and you'll go really, really far. And Adiel, um, before you switch the slide, um, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to explain that was Footsie the owl in the picture. So he's our mascot. Um, so yeah, just wanted to throw that out. Yeah, the, you will catch uh, Footsie the owl at a lot of our events. Um, we'll never share who is inside of that costume, uh, but if there's anybody who has like crazy dance moves, come talk to us and maybe we can find a spot um, for you to help out with the owl. But we do have, you'll, you'll see the footsie owl at a lot of the events and uh, maybe we'll even put them in some of our videos that we have online. Oh yeah, follow us on TikTok and Instagram. We have great social media accounts. Yeah, definitely follow us. Uh, we also have a YouTube series where we'll be posting this as well. Uh, interact in whichever social media, where, wherever you get your memes, we'll be there to support you 
uh, and try to provide some lightheartedness, some fun times. Uh, but we do want to welcome you and thank you for taking the time. Even if you didn't watch the entire virtual tour, hopefully you have a better idea of what some of the buildings look like and where they're located. I hope that you decide to get involved and hopefully you do decide to choose Foothill College. Do you guys have any, uh, do you have a one uh, word of advice that you'd like to share with students? Maybe one thing you wish you knew or just something that you would uh, reach out to, to something that you wish you knew when you were first starting at Foothill? Um, Maria, do you want to go first? <laughs> um, so oh, one, go for oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So one thing I wish I knew like before coming was that like I was going to make friends. In the beginning, I wasn't going to, I didn't have that in my idea like I was going to make friends. Like I always thought just going to school, like focusing on school, nothing else mattered, just getting my degree, everything. But that wasn't the case. Like literally for me, I got involved in so much things. Like right now I'm getting involved in so much things that's really important to me. And like, I had my own personal situation going on. So I didn't really want to be friends with anybody. But with Foothill College, like you have so many, you can be friends with anybody. Like pe people there are so friendly, even the professors, everybody that works at Foothill is so kind. And that's something that like an advice I would have given myself back then was just to get involved. Get involved, that's great advice. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going to say. Um, join as many clubs as you can. Obviously, don't overextend yourself. Like, don't sign up for like 10 clubs. But um, yeah, just join as many things as you can and try to reach out to people, reach out to your professors, um, reach out to your fellow classmates. If you're struggling in a class, um, form a study group. That's, that's what I did. And um, I still, you know, have friends from study groups that you know, we still study together. Um, so I would definitely make school a priority, obviously, but if you have time to do other things like join a club or join the dance team, then I would definitely do that. That's great advice from both of you. Thank you all for coming and joining and, and listening to this presentation. We'll leave you here with a visual of our campus. Hopefully we can see you in better times on in person on campus, but we are here virtually to assist you. If you take online classes, please feel free to reach out and we'll include our emails when we post this video to make sure that you guys can ask us any questions that you have. Uh, any questions about transferring, financial aid, the registration process, or just getting involved in the campus life. Uh, we hope to hear from you and we can't wait to see you. Take care, everybody. <laughs>